Now we are going into part 2 of metal forming 1. This uh, topic that we are going to discuss is the material behavior in metal forming. So uh, since the material will go through the plastic uh, deformation, stress strain curve will be the primary interest in this uh, subject. Okay. So in plastic region, metal behavior is expressed through flow curve which is given uh, uh, through this equation where sigma equal to k epsilon n. So k is the strength coefficient and n it will be the strain hardening exponent. So the flow curve uh, will be based on the true stress and true strain. Now let's see the stress strain relationship through this graph. Okay. So uh, if you can remember this graph is actually um, if you are if you are done with the tensile test previously uh, so this is the most common um, stress strain um, uh, graph. Okay. So in here, when the uh, stress is applied on the uh, certain material, okay, it will start to uh, shift the yield strength y here, and then and it will come to the maximum uh, at it here, which is the y f. Okay. So in the middle here. So we can classify it as the average flow stress of the process. Okay. Now let us look into the flow stress. So for most metal at room temperature, strength will increase when we uh, deform it uh, due to the strain hardening. So flow stress is this instantaneous value of the stress that required to continue deforming the material. So in this case, the flow stress, uh, will uh, we can assume it straight, same as the stress flow where, uh, equation, which is uh, k epsilon n. Okay, so uh, where yf is the flow stress, k is the strain coefficient, and strain hardening exponent, and also epsilon will be the maximum strain during the formation process. On the other hand, average flow stress uh, is determined by the integrating the flow curve equation between zero to the final strain. Okay, so uh, we have to differentiate between the average flow stress and the flow stress. Flow, flow stress is on certain point, and uh, for the average flow stress, it will be from uh, the process from the start till the end. Okay, so this one uh, is calculate by using uh, yf equal to k epsilon n over 1 plus n okay so the difference will be 1 plus n okay from the flow stress equation so the the value inside here is uh, the the uh, component is the same like the one in the uh, flow stress okay now uh, in order for you to understand more on the uh, uh, flow stress and average flow stress let us look into the problem and the solution so in here uh, uh, the flow curve of for pure aluminium uh, the strength coefficient will be k equal to 175 mpa strain hardening exponent n 0.2 in a forming operation, the final true strain will be 0 0.75. So we have to determine the flow stress and average average flow stress. So uh, first, you take the equation for the flow stress, and then you will see K is the 175 MPa uh, times with 0 0.75 and uh, with the power of 0 0.2. So you are going to have 165 MPa. Okay. So for average flow stress you have to divide by 1 plus n so as you already get the value here 165 mpa you just divide by 1 plus n so 1.2 so you will get 138 mpa now let us look into the second problem so authentic tensile steel has a flow curve with strength coefficient k equal to 1200 mpa Strain hardening exponent n equal to 0 0.4. Tensile test specimen with gauge length 100 mm. Then it is stretched to a length of 145 mm. Determine the flow stress and average flow stress that the metal experience at this trait. Okay. So in this here, if you can see, the epsilon is not given. right? So in here, you will have to calculate the epsilon. So for the epsilon, it is calculated by using loan the uh, final um, length 
over the initial line. Okay, so if you can see here is it is stretched 245 mm over the 100. So meaning this is the uh, changes uh, of the, uh, the stretch uh, product. Okay, so the ratio. So you will get loan equal uh, 1.45, you will get 0 0.372. So then you will be able to calculate the value for the low stress. Then you will get the 808 MPA and average flow stress equal to 577 MPA. So for any metal, uh, the K and N value uh, in the flow curve is dependent to the temperature. Okay, so it's very temp uh, sensitive to the temperature. So both strength K and also strain hardening will be reduced when the temperature is high. Okay, so in addition, the ductility also will increase when the temperature is increased. Due to that, the temperature in metal forming is classified into three uh, levels. One is cold working, second is warm working, and third one is hot working. Okay. Now let us look into the um, the type of the temperature uh, one by one. The first one will be cold working. So as the name it is as cold, so it is performed at room temperature or slightly above. Okay, so slightly above is not due to the temperature that rise through heating, but it is more on because of the friction and also from the force that uh, uh, kinetic force uh, that we give into the uh, workpiece. Okay, so many coal forming uh, process is very important for mass production operation because um, they can produce a, a part with minimum or no machining. Uh, so that uh, it uh, can go into near net shape or net shape process. Okay, so meaning that there will be no additional machining required uh, for the process. The advantages if we um, perform the forming process uh, when uh, at room temperature will be, it can uh, give better accuracy and close closer tolerance because there will be no shrinkage of the metal because there is no changes of the temperature, right? And then it can also produce better surface finish and strain hardening uh, will increase the strength and hardness of the work material. And uh, grain flow during the, uh, the deformation will cause desirable directional properties in the product uh, because um, the grain inside there will be uh, quite uh, is good. And then there will be no heating of the work required, so less cost on heating uh, the, the work material. So, um, despite the advantages, they also have um, uh, disadvantages. For example, you will need uh, higher forces and power for the deformation. And then, uh, of course, lah, if you uh, push the, the work material that is soft due to the heating and the one without heating, of course, the one that been heated will flow uh, much better compared to the one uh, with, without heating, right? Okay, so starting work surface must be free of scale and dirt. So the starting material cannot uh, have any scale, any oxide layer on it. Okay, it has to be um, very, uh, very clean. Okay, so ductility and strain hardening limit the amount of the forming that can be done. So because of the, uh, because it is not heated, so uh, the ductility will not be increased, right? And then uh, due to that, uh, we can produce a very complicated part or you cannot produce a part uh, using uh, the material that is low in ductility. Okay? So in some cases, metal mm, need to be annealed before further deformation can be accomplished. Uh, and some other cases, metal is simply not ducted enough to be cool work. Okay? So if we, it is not ducted enough, and we try to push into it, it will start to break instead of producing the uh, good product. For the warm working, it is performed at temperature above room temperature, but it is below recrystallization temperature of the work material. So dividing line between cold and uh, warm working, it is expressed in terms of um, melting point, which is 0 0.3 times the Tm. Okay, so uh, when uh, the temperature is uh, 
up than 0 0.3 the, uh, melting temperature of the work material, then it is considered as the warm working. So now let us look into the advantages and disadvantages of warm working. So the advantages will be, uh, of course, once you heat the work material, it will be lower forces and power in uh, compared to the cold working. Um, so you can produce more intricate work geometries and you uh, the need of the annealing maybe uh, can be reduced or you can you don't have to do any annealing anymore okay so but the disadvantages of course you will need um, uh, the workpiece to be heated so uh, there will be costs on the um, heating part so for hard working the deformation of the temperature will be above the recrystallization temperature of the work material so uh, this one is about half of the melting temperature. So in this uh, part, we can calculate it using the equation 0 0.5 times the uh, melting temperature of the work material. And then uh, the metal will continue to soften as the temperature increase above the 0 0.5 Tm. And then it will enhance the advantage of hot working above this level. So, uh, why manufacturer go for the hot working? Okay, why hot working is uh, selected uh, by most of the uh, manufacturer? Because of the capability for the substantial plastic deformation. So, you can create a lot of uh, intricate uh, geometries. You can create a lot of um, uh, product and you can also use uh, uh, many types of material. Okay, so... Uh, when the strength coefficient K is substantially less than room temperature, the strain hardening exponent uh, will we theoretically we can say as uh, it will become zero. So the ductility will significantly increase, and therefore you can do the metal forming to the material uh, smooth smoothly. So now let us look some advantages of hot working. So uh, as uh, compared to the previous um, uh, process. Work shape can be significantly altered. Okay, so you can uh, shape into many of sh uh, intricate shape. Uh, you can have low a uh, lower forces and power. Okay, and then metal that usually fracture in cold working, you can do it through the hot form. Okay, and then strength properties of the product will be generally isotropic, and no strengthening of part occur from work hardening. Okay, so. Um, it will be advantageous in case when the part is to be subsequently processed by the coal forming. As for the disadvantages, um, in this one, it will lower the dimensional accuracy. Why? Because um, as a metal um, heated, you do the um, process of um, defor uh, metal forming. Uh, in the end, when it cools down, it will start to shrink. Okay. So, higher total energy will require, meaning that uh, you will need uh, a lot of energy, thermal energy to heat the workpiece and then you will uh, need um, energy uh, added. If you add with the energy to deform the metal, then it will be higher. Okay. So, uh, for the work surface oxidation, it will happen when it start to cool down. Um, there is a possibility for the oxidation to happen. Uh, therefore, it will give a poor surface finish. And the last one will be shorter to life. So, when the work material is being heated, of course, it will affect the die, uh, the roller or any kind of uh, tools that we use to, to perform the process of the metal forming. Okay, So, therefore, there will be uh, more cost on the die um, and maintenance. So that's it for today's class. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum.